Okay. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Scott. Hey. This is the Discover and Sketch the West Indian Woodpecker webinar. <laughs> I'm Christine Elder. Right. Here in the middle is Lisa Sorensen from Birds Caribbean and Scott Johnson from Bahamas National Trust. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. It's so great to have you all here um, for this webinar, the second one in our series for the Caribbean Endemic Bird Festival. Uh, let's see. You can go ahead and advance the slide, Scott. Okay. So this is co-hosted today by Birds Caribbean. Um, I'm Lisa Sorensen. I'm the executive director. We're really delighted to have Scott Johnson with us. He's a science officer with the Bahamas National Trust and an awesome field biologist. Um, does work on Kirtland's warblers, um, cuckoos, piping plovers, um, all kinds of stuff. Um, he does <laughs> snakes. He does it all. And then Christine Elder, who's an awesome nature artist. You guys all know her. She wrote, um, did the illustrations for Endemic Birds of the West Indies coloring book, which we published last year. So it's really delightful to, to be doing another webinar with her this spring. Okay, next slide. All right, so um, this is how we roll, according to Christine. <laughs> um, you should have downloaded uh, the resources, the picture of the West Indian woodpecker, which you're going to use for your drawing in the second half of the webinar. Um, Scott's going to present for the first half hour on the natural history of the woodpecker. And um, if you have chat questions or comments, put them in the chat box. If you're watching us on Facebook, you can put the comments there and we'll be monitoring that as well. And you can answer the quizzes, you can ask questions there as well. And um, then after Scott presents for 30 minutes, then we'll switch over to Christine, who's gonna teach us how to draw the woodpecker. And I'm really excited and I'm a beginner drawer. So um, for all you beginners, don't be intimidated. Christine's really good at getting an amazing presentation, amazing drawing out of you on your first try. Uh, so just a little bit about Birds Caribbean, if you're not familiar with us, um, we are a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to conserving birds and nature in all the islands of the Caribbean. Uh, next slide. We have a lot of partners that we work with throughout all the islands and we work on bird conservation. We do a lot with bird education, and right now is our Caribbean Endemic Bird Festival. And so we invite you to follow us on social media. Um, every day we have a new endemic bird of the day. In the region, there are 171 endemic birds. And so these are birds that are found in the Caribbean and nowhere else in the world. So we're featuring a new species every day. We have coloring pages for kids. We have activity sheets like crossword puzzles and word searches. We have weekly webinars like this one, um, videos. We have a bird zine contest. Go to our website to learn about that. It's for anybody out there that wants to give their hand at trying to um, put together a little self-published magazine. It's super easy and fun. You can learn more about that. And we have awesome prizes for that contest, including um, two pairs of fancy binoculars. And so, yeah, just jot down those um, links and visit us at our website to learn more and follow along on social media. All right, next. And so without further ado, I will turn it over to Scott Johnson, who will share with us his knowledge about um, West Indian woodpeckers and get ready for um, some quizzes that will be happening along the way. So take uh, it away, Scott. All right, thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you so much, Christine. Um, hi, everybody. I am excited to talk about this very special bird called the West Indian woodpecker. And I'm sure that many of you across the Caribbean may have heard or seen a woodpecker. I know everybody may have watched cartoons like Woody Woodpecker back in the, past, back in the day, um, depending on how old school you really are. But um, just, to, uh, just to get things going, this is a very, very special bird. And it's also a bird that is of concern, especially in places like the Bahamas. And so we'll talk a little bit about that um, as we go on. So there are a bunch of very cool species of woodpeckers across the Caribbean. I don't know how much people know about these amazing birds. You may have seen it. If you live on Hispaniola, you have the Hispaniolan woodpecker Guadalupe. I had the opportunity to visit Guadalupe. We saw this amazing woodpecker. Then you have the Cuban green. I had the opportunity to visit Cuba and I saw this amazing animal as well. And in the Bahamas, we have the hairy woodpecker as well as in um, parts of the US. So there are a 
bunch of really cool woodpeckers in the Caribbean and around the world. So before I jump into going into the meat of the presentation, this is the first quiz for you guys. So yes, we do like to throw some pop in, um, some pop quizzes out there for you just to see how everybody is thinking and just have a little bit of fun. So the question number question one is, how many species of woodpeckers are there in the Caribbean? Is it five? Is it seven? Is it 12? Or is it 14? All right, we've got a pretty good diversity of answers. I'd say the majority are saying 14. All right, so shall we continue? <laughs> so the answer is, according to Birds of the West Indies, there are 254 extant species of woodpeckers and 12 species that are native to the Caribbean region. So 14, that's, a, that's, an, interesting, that's an interesting thought. Maybe we have to look at um, what, what are some of the woodpeckers that we uh, may have overlooked. But this is the answer, 12 species that are native to the region and one vagrant, okay? And so you have the West Indian woodpecker, the Jamaican woodpecker, just to name a few others. Um, then you get the Puerto Rican woodpecker, the Northern Cuban flicker, and the yellow-bellied sapsucker. These are just a few species that you could find across the, the region. And yes, flickers and sapsuckers are types of woodpeckers. As you can see, this uh, yellow-bellied sapsucker has really drilled a lot of holes in this coconut palm, okay? So woodpeckers in general are absolutely amazing animals with amazing adaptations. I know if persons who love birds, you'll know that birds have different adaptations that give them an edge in the ecosystems that they live in. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the woodpecker. One, woodpeckers have an incredibly long and sticky tongue. That tongue could be two, three, even four times longer than their bill, okay? The tongue also um, produces, the, the woodpecker also produces a lot of sticky saliva which it uses to help capture insects. And it, this, its tongue is also barbed. So it, it's used basically like a spear to help to harpoon these animals. So, I mean, arthropods and stuff that they eat. So flickers, which is a type of woodpecker, also has the longest tongue of our woodpeckers and they are used to eat ants. So if you know about anteaters, you know the anteaters, they have these very long tongues. Uh, these woodpeckers, um, they have the same thing. And what's also cool about woodpeckers is that they, their tongue is so long that it can't really fit all in its mouth. So the tongue extends from the back of the skull, a lot of, um, around the back of the skull and terminates into the right nostril of many species of woodpeckers. And this also helps to add as a form of cushion, which moves into the next part of the adaptations of the woodpeckers. They have a very, very unique um, body structure. If you're drilling in trees, you are your brain is going to um, experience a lot of stress. And woodpeckers have evolved to be able to counter a lot of that stress. Woodpeckers have a very spongy, their brain, the skull, the inside of the skull is very spongy and the brain is very tightly packed. So it minimizes the amount of rattling that happens when these animals are drilling into into trees and then their beak and their skull is connected by cartilage which also helps to absorb the shock that comes with drilling so think about this um a woodpecker can drill um with forces up to 1200 to 1400 g's now just to put that in perspective if we was to hit our head at just uh, 100 g's we would pretty much be dead so these animals are absolutely amazing in their abilities to drill non-stop constantly um, in these trees to get at these um, get at the food that they need to eat. They also have very sturdy tail, a very sturdy tail with strong uh, tail uh, uh, tail bones and vertebrae, which helps to support them while they're drilling. That's why you always see them, they're kind of erect, like this, uh, this bird here, this woodpecker here, when they are um, drilling into trees. And they also specialize feet with hooked claws and uh, oftentimes it's zygodactyl, which means you have two 
claws facing the front and two claws facing the back, which helps them to anchor themselves on a tree. So these animals are specially adapted for a life of drilling in the trees and walk and crawl, creeping up and down on uh, tree trunks. So we bring you to another quiz, um, another question. True or false? West Indian woodpeckers are found throughout the Caribbean or th throughout all the Caribbean islands. All right. I'd say it's about half and half. What do you think, Scott? Mm, okay, let's find out. And the answer is... So this slide represents the range that you will find West Indian woodpeckers. And of course, this is the West Indies. It's amazing archipelago. And uh, West Indian woodpeckers have been found or are found on the island of Grand Bahama in the Bahamas, Abaco, again in the Bahamas, San Salvador, Cuba, and the Cayman Islands. So there are five subspecies that are found in these locations um, in the West Indies slash the Caribbean, okay? And speaking of subspecies, um, there are, like I mentioned, there are five subspecies that you could find in the, um, in the Caribbean. And you have the nominate, which is this one, the Cuban, um, the Cuban, wood, the Cuban West, West Indian uh, woodpecker subspecies, Superciliaris. This one is the biggest one of all of the five subspecies, and this is found on the island of Cuba, like I mentioned. Then you have um, three subspecies. Um, depending on who you ask, they're going to say two or three subspecies that you can find in the Bahamas. And then you have the ones that are found in the Cayman Islands, such as this impressive, um, these impressive ones here. So the, um, the Cuban subspecies is larger um, than the others. And some characteristics of it that, that can be found in most of the subspecies is that they have a red crown, nape, and hind neck. Um, in most of the subspecies, they do have a black superciliary uh, stripe or band right up here, except for in the, uh, the Cayman Islands subspecies, okay? And then um, the Cayman is also a bit lighter. It's back, which is all of them have barred back colorations. And uh, the Cayman one is a lot lighter than the more darker um, Bahamian ones and the Cuban ones. So is it a West Indian woodpecker? If we look at these two, you can clearly see that there are some similarities between these two. This is a red belly woodpecker and this is a West Indian. But you can see some differences from the two. So if you look at the West Indian woodpecker, it has red nasal tufts. It has the black mark over the eye, like I mentioned. And it has more of a buffy gray belly, whereas with the red bellied woodpecker, it has the red head, um, nape, and high neck. It has a white rump when, you, when it flies. And its belly is a lot lighter. And it's called a red belly woodpecker because um, you, it would have a very light red belly right up here. But because the, how the bird usually is perched on a tree, you won't, most likely will not, will not see it. Okay. And uh, this is some of the, this is a vocalization. Some of you may want to hear what a West Indian woodpecker sounds like. And so I'm hoping that this can play, but this is what a West Indian woodpecker looks like and sounds like in the wild. So you may want to turn your speakers up if you can't hear it. So this is a West Indian woodpecker on, on the island of Abaco in the Northern Bahamas. And that's um, one calling to its mate. Okay, and Scott, I've got a recording queued up that might play a little louder. Let me give that a try. Okay. Hold on. I have one as well too, Lisa. Let me do that one more time. Wait for it. All 
All right. So How is that? If, is that a little better? That sounds great. Thank you so much, Lisa. So if you are on those islands and you do hear that very unique and distinct call, chances are there's a West Indian woodpecker in your area. So you may want to just keep your eyes and ears open for that amazing, for this amazing bird. So the types of habitat that you can find a, a West Indian woodpecker in would be limestone dry forests, such as those that you could see in the Cayman Islands and the Bahamas. They also can be found in residential areas. This is a West Indian woodpecker on a, uh, a telephone pole. And you could also find them in areas which have a lot of palms. And so um, this is the Cayman Islands. This is a Cayman Islands wood, uh, West Indian woodpecker subspecies in the, the, dry, um, the dry forest, the dry limestone forest. And this is some of the habitat, some of the palm habitat that you could find them as well. So they do have a nice diverse range of habitats that you can find them. So on some islands, they are a little bit more general in where they can be found, whereas others, they are more restricted. For example, on the island of San Salvador, these, these woodpeckers tend to be in areas where you have um, large amounts of palm um, palm, uh, palm trees. Whereas in Abaco, um, you could find them in the dry forest as well as in residential areas. Okay. So another quiz for you guys, hope everybody's paying attention. And that is West Indian woodpeckers eat only insects and arthropods. Is this true or false? All right. I would say, let's hear the answer, Scott. Getting All right, the so the answer is, it's false. <laughs> so West Indian woodpeckers eat a variety of, of different things. They eat fruit, berries, um, they eat insects and arthropods, but they also have been observed to eat lizards and frogs. So their diet is very diverse. This is another example of a West Indian woodpecker in the Bahamas, and it is eating a seed pot um, from a uh, cinnacore tree, Acacia coriophylla tree. And in the Bahamas, we call this tree pumpus because you can eat the fruit from it, but it can't give you gas. So you'll be pumping or farting a lot. <laughs> so these birds are enjoying, this one is enjoying, see, as it eats the seed pot right now. So just to give you an idea that these guys have a very general type of um, foraging behavior. Very cool, Scott. That's a great video. Thank you. So breeding. Um, West Indian woodpeckers tend to breed between the months of February and August. And like a many, like many species of birds, especially during the breeding season, they are for the most part monogamous. However, we do have some records of West Indian woodpeckers being polyandrous. Now that should have been a question I should ask you guys. And that is, what does polyandry mean? But because it's not a question, I'm not going to throw it out there to you guys. Um, polyandrous just means that it's one female and she may have multiple males as mates. And in this case, on Abaco, the, the subspecies Blakei, um, th there was a record of a female who had two males and she was nesting. Uh, she was she had two male, two mates. Um, and so she successfully bred. Um, she successfully had chicks and they successfully fledged. So she, but she was putting in a lot of work to try to, to raise both, uh, both uh, families. So that's a very unique mating style, um, uh, mating behavior in um, birds like uh, West Indian woodpeckers. Both parents do um, incubate and take care of young, unlike birds like hummingbirds, in which is just a female that does all of the rearing. And Unfortunately, like with all animals, there are threats to these uh, these amazing birds. Um, in some spot, in some populations, they are habitat specialists. Like on the islands in Salvador, these these um, woodpeckers like to nest in palm trees. Um, and uh, uh, if you lose that type of habitat due to habitat loss, you can wipe out an, a very unique population of birds. Invasive species like cats are one of the biggest threats to any type of bird. These bird, these animals um, kill billions of birds every year. And so 
um, they are a major threat to our bird life, especially birds like West Indian woodpeckers. And then you have hurricanes. Um, these storms can wipe out or severely decrease a population um, on uh, a, a population of West Indian woodpeckers or any bird species. I know Hurricane Dorian affected um, Abaco in 2019, and it led uh, left a lot of, of ecosystems devastated on the islands of Abaco and Grand Bahama. But West Indian woodpeckers are still surviving on uh, on Abaco and San Salvador, but because of their very small range, um, it is always a threat that we could lose this population with just one major storm. And so what can you do to help conserve these amazing birds? Well, one, you wanna plant native trees, especially palms. Remember, like I said, West Indian woodpeckers love to use palms as a nest site. And if you plant um, a lot of native palms, it could be, you may be able to attract a, a woodpecker to your yard um, if you have them on your island. Um, you wanna keep your cats indoors. Do not let those predators out because they will go out and they will hunt and kill a lot of our native and endemic birds and other wildlife. Um, you wanna educate the public such as what we're doing now on this platform and that is educating people on this amazing species that we have in the Bahamas, Cuba and Cayman Islands and is endemic to the Caribbean region. And you wanna support conservation organizations like Birds Caribbean and the Bahamas National Trust, um, as well as other um, NGOs that you have on your respected islands that are doing work to help to conserve um, um, bird species like Anguilla National Trust, et cetera, et cetera. And um, what you can also do is go birding. The more you spend outdoors and enjoying nature and the bird life, the more you feel um, connected to these animals and to the environment. And that may help to push you into um, becoming more of a steward for the environment. And I know that we are very interested in you being a part of the grand scheme of things, which is um, conservationists who have to conserve and protect our native wildlife. And so with that, that's a very short presentation. I just wanna say thank you so much for participating. And this is just the first part of this, uh, this presentation. Christine is going to show you guys how to draw these amazing birds. So I hope you guys enjoy and continue watching. Great, thank you so much, Scott. Okay, let's get uh, out of that there. And I'm gonna close you guys out for now, okay? okay. We'll invite you up on the end again. Thank you, Scott and Lisa, thank you. And let's share my screen here. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to now talk about how to sketch the West Indian woodpecker. Now, I know a lot of you guys are afraid of drawing, but don't leave. <laughs> we're going to be able to do this together. I promise you, okay? Um, so uh, if you haven't met me already, hi, I'm Christine Elder. I'm a naturalist, environmental educator, and visual artist. And I live in Central Oregon. Uh, where we happen to have 12 species of woodpeckers. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons that I'm here today because I know a little bit about woodpeckers. And um, as I said, I'm a scientific illustrator and I uh, contributed illustrations to the uh, uh, Peterson Reference Guide to North American Woodpeckers. Uh, I've also been lucky to travel throughout the Caribbean. I've seen um, the Hispaniolan, Guadalupan, uh, Jamaican, Puerto Rican, uh, not the Cuban green, but many of the Caribbean's endemic woodpeckers. Uh, and I've seen woodpeckers throughout uh, Central and South America and even Asia. I got to see the uh, great slaty woodpecker. And as Lisa mentioned before, I am the illustrator of the Endemic Birds of the West Indies coloring book that's produced by Birds Caribbean. So you can get a copy of that uh, on the uh, Birds Caribbean website. Uh, so, so yeah, and uh, I love to travel and I love to sketch in the field and I love to give people the ease and confidence to try to be sketching in the field, not necessarily to make beautiful paintings that you might hang on your wall, but to um, improve your birding skills 
So even if you draw very simple, symbolic, almost stick figures with the field marks on them, you're going to learn and remember those new birds. And there are, of course, 10,000 10, or so birds in the world. So a lot of them are pretty uh, challenging. And as Scott said, many of those woodpeckers look similar as well, especially those Melanerpes genus. So anyway, I love to encourage people to um, use sketching as a tool for understanding nature and not getting intimidated about, uh, you know, making fine art. Okay. And so um, what do you need for um, this little uh, sketching demonstration I'm going to do for you? Well, uh, basically, mainly just a pencil and paper. Uh, and even if you don't have that, you can go ahead and just keep watching and then you can watch the replay once you get the materials. If you weren't able to, you can always watch the replay. So keep the link to this workshop. So anyway, if you do have paper and pencils, that's great. And then um, you may have downloaded the high resolution image that I have for you here. Uh, that's at a link below. Uh, and also don't worry about it because as I show you the step-by-step -step demonstration of drawing the West Indian woodpecker, uh, there will be some, some close-ups of the different parts. So don't worry if you weren't able to download that, okay? And then um, we're not going to have time to move on to the colored pencils, but I do have a quick demo on how I do that. Um, and so just stick around for that. Okay, let's see, what else? So uh, Scott already introduced uh, the woodpecker and, and basically it's parts, but I wanna say a little bit more about that. Let me make those slides larger. I'm gonna make myself smaller. Okay, there we go. So where are we here? Okay, so the you, you know when you're drawing something, you really wanna notice the anatomy. And the more you spend some time uh, learning about and understanding the anatomy of a species and also how it differs from similarly related species, um, the, the quicker and more confident you're gonna be able to draw it. So like Scott said, um, the species Melanerpes <laughs> superciliaris uh, is named uh, for the black supercilium that gives the species its name. Uh, and um, this is uh, the, uh, the one that lives in Cuba. So uh, the male and the female do differ a bit. We are drawing the female today with this black sort of cap here between the cream and the red. And the male has um, no um, black there. Uh, just a teeny bit above its eye. So um, now woodpeckers, of course, have a big, strong bill and it's uh, pigmented with melanin, which makes it stronger because it is using that bill for not only feeding and drumming and uh, excavating its nest, but all sorts of things. So it's got to be strong. And of course, they do have a nostril. So don't forget about that. Uh, birds do uh, uh, breathe. They do hear as well, and their ear is hidden um, under this circular patch here on their cheek, the auriculars. Okay. And then let's see, keep going here. Oh, no, sorry. There we go. <laughs> Scott also mentioned their tail. So woodpeckers live a very vertical lifestyle, right? And so they're not perching on a horizontal branch. They're almost always perching on a um, tree, a palm tree or an oak tree or even a um, telephone pole. And so they have a very different kind of feet and tail to help them do that. And their tail um, is divided up into two sets of six feathers. And generally you just see these to um, this pair of central feathers that is very brightly patterned, black and white. We call that black and white coloring on birds being pied, P-I-E-D. And uh, so lots of birds have that. And uh, I have that as well on my shirt. <laughs> so um, anyway, noticing that tail and those two central tail feathers have a very long central shaft, um, the rachis, and that's longer than the veins. And that's super stiff compared to any other bird. And they're going to be using that to press against the tree and give them a uh, uh, move their center of gravity uh, closer to the tree, uh, as well as their interesting feet. Uh, let's see, so here's just a couple of um, pictures of showing how they really are pressing that very firm tail against the tree. And again, that tail is black, as well as their, um, their flight feathers are black to give them um, strength. The melanin pigment gives them a lot of strength. 
Okay. And then their wings. So you see those pied wings, the black and white stripes. Now you might get really intimidated by drawing all those patterns on the wings. And I am just going to show you that kind of very quickly at the end. But if you understand a little bit about individual feather coloration and wing anatomy, it makes it a lot easier. So you see that their um, primary flight feathers are mainly black with white bases. And woodpeckers are also uh, kind of unique in having a very short feather here um, a, a, among their primaries, a super short feather. And then these other feathers here, that's their thumb or a lula. Okay. So anyway, the tips of those feathers are black to give them a lot of strength. And then their secondary feathers are what we call barred. So they're barred black and white. So anyway, if you understand that concept of the um, how the primary and the secondary feathers look, it makes it a lot easier to draw. Okay, and so you know when we draw that that uh, feather, that wing, uh, it makes it easier to kind of think about the parts first before we start getting confused with all of the black and white barring. And so um, any bird's feather is made up of these major parts: um, the mantle that's um, on top of their uh, back, the scapulars that kind of go on the side. Uh, the primary and secondary coverts, which cover and protect the uh, primary and secondary feathers. So that's something we'll work on in a minute. And then the feet. Uh, the feet are unique as well. So Scott had mentioned how they're zygodactyle. So that kind of means that there's two forward and two backwards. Although the um, the woodpecker uh, is unique in being able to move this fourth toe or fourth digit. Uh, it can move it a little bit farther back or towards the front or straight out at an angle. And that really helps it to uh, anchor itself again in the vertical position. And then it's got this other toe that's generally just kind of flat against the uh, tree facing down, which also helps to give them some more stability. Okay, and then here's that, that foot. <laughs> and when we're drawing it, there are four toes, but the one we're drawing, you can't see that uh, third toe very well. Um, no, that's technically the second toe. So all you see is the, um, all you see is the claw here. Anyway, we'll draw that in a second. Okay, so a few tips for sketching before we start. I want you to think about kind of pretending that we're sketching in the field. We're not going to try to be too perfect. We're just going to keep that pencil moving. We're going to hold it very lightly and loosely, which is a little bit different. Let me, let me, um, here we go. So we want to keep that pencil sort of light and loose, not holding it real tight and low as if we're sketching um, our name, like, you know, C-H-R-I-S for my name, um, but more light and loose and a little bit farther back to give us a little bit more uh, freedom in our pencil marks. And then we want to keep that pencil moving as if our woodpecker might fly away at any minute. <laughs> and that'll give you some confidence in trying to sketch them in the field if they actually do fly away. Try to avoid erasing, not because, you know, we're going to be perfect right in the beginning, but because we want to put away our, our perfectionist hat, take that off, and be just a scientist, like who's curious and observing and just trying um, to keep that pencil moving and glancing back and forth at our woodpecker on that palm tree and then down to our sketch, back and forth and back and forth. So you're really drawing from direct observation and not so much from memory or, um, uh, you know, your, your dreams, <laughs> right? We're going to try to draw what we see. And uh, like I said, I want you to focus on the process rather than the product. So the process of looking at something long enough to draw it will hopefully help you learn a lot more about it and you'll never forget it and you'll never um, mistake this woodpecker species for any other because you've really looked at those field marks. Okay. And then lastly, have fun. You know, there are a lot bigger problems in this world than worrying about whether your drawing is correct. So let's just have fun. Okay.
Okay. And then, so, uh, I kind of have this quick process that I have people go through and, um, I actually have online courses that teach you a lot more about sketching birds, birds, but in the quickest nuts shell, I call this my six step roadmap to sketching success. And that's basically where you think first about blocking in the major shapes, the triangles, the circles, the rectangles, then you think about the proportions relatively to each. So like maybe the head is half the size of the body or the tail is a third of the length of the body, those kind of things. Then you want to think about alignments. That means what structures are aligned with other structures, like maybe, um, Maybe the, the wings, uh, wing feathers are parallel to each other, or maybe the beak is parallel to the ground, or the two feet are parallel to each other. Then uh, the idea of negative shapes, and that just means all the shapes that are around your um, bird that you're drawing that aren't the bird. So uh, like this uh, shape between the two legs. So I want you to try to have your mind going back and forth between looking at the bird and looking at the shapes that surround it. Same thing with the angles. So you can look at things and think to yourself, is this a 90 degree angle between the bill and the chest? Or is this a 45 degree angle between the toes and the leg? Okay. And then flow lines. That just means thinking about how your pencil flows along um, over the object. Now, um, I want to look real quick. I have some questions. Um, let's see. <laughs> okay, uh, it's, uh, there's a question about the Guadalupe woodpecker. Well, we can't talk about all the woodpeckers today, but we do talk about the Guadalupe woodpecker in the endemic birds of the West Indies. And I think maybe it is part of the Caribbean Endemic Bird Festival information. Okay, and um, Hannah or Rebecca says, can you do more free stuff? <laughs> I do lots of free stuff. So make sure to go check out my website and my Facebook page. I do free things uh, at least several times a month. So Hannah, we've missed you a lot. <laughs> Keep in touch. Okay, now, um, so like we were saying, those things about proportions, angles, alignments, and negative shapes. And so this is the photograph that we're drawing from today. So you can see a lot of examples of that, like the proportion of the bill uh, length to the uh, head length, or the angle between the uh, chest and the neck, the alignments of the um, parallel tail feathers and the parallel wing feathers. Uh, and then the negative shapes, there's lots of nice negative shapes, uh, like the blue of the sky here and uh, here uh, between the legs. Okay, let's see. Now, um, before I get out of the slideshow and we start the um, sketching step-by-step -step demonstration, make sure to post your sketches online when you're done with the hashtag CEBF2021, which of course means the Caribbean Endemic Bird Festival 2021, okay? So anyway, the bird we're drawing now is a female, uh, and that's uh, because we see the black head here, and the, the red is just back here on the, the nape. Okie dokie. And so, and it's the Cuban race or the nominate race. That means the main one that's the uh, species was described and named for. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to do the easy part first. We're going to draw the trunk. <laughs> and this trunk does not go straight down. It kind of goes at a little bit of an angle, if you might notice. Now we're going to um, place all the major parts very lightly. And then we're going to go back to each part. And I'm going to show you close-ups. So don't worry. Uh, we're just going to do really quickly a line for the bill and the head. So the basic length of that whole bill and head. And then a very, very light teardrop shape. So I know you can't see this really well. <clears throat> um, but the idea is just listen to me while you're drawing. Make a teardrop shape for the head. And, and then noticing that big, strong bill. And that bill is as long as almost the whole head uh, for drilling in and searching for insects as well as all kinds of stuff, spiders, and, and uh, they even eat fruit. 
So again, remember, we're going to come back to the head and the rest of the body um, as we go. But we're first getting a very, very light sketch. We're not putting much pressure on your pencil at all. I want you to try to have a very light touch as if you're almost just tickling the paper and very um, not even touching the paper very strongly. So just an arch for the chest and the rump and the vent area. And then an arch for the wings coming down and they, they angle down kind of towards the left, towards the tree trunk. And those wings come up into kind of a triangle area on the bird's body from the back of the neck to the chest and the belly and down. So that makes a big triangle, those big black and white pied uh, feathers of the wing. I'm just double checking my width there. So I do a lot of that as I'm going along, double checking the lengths and the widths while I'm at this stage, while we're just being very light and loose. So we don't feel like we have to spend too much time erasing. Now we're going to do a line for the uh, tail feathers and those go to the edge of the trunk and then down because they're um, very stiff and flexible. So they're pressing against the trunk. So they're going down um, the, the right set of six feathers goes down and touches almost the bottom of the trunk near the paper, near the edge of the bottom edge of the paper. And this left set of six feathers comes down almost as far. And you see they're very pointed and black at the end. Again, very stiff and black because they're pigmented with melanin, which is a very strong pigment. Okay, now firming up the belly area. And that belly goes down. There's the two legs and we just see the left leg mainly. So the foreleg that's feathered and then the, the left tarsus, which is angled up. And we've got just a couple toes visible. We'll put more detail in those later. Don't worry. We're just basically placing them kind of where they're at. Now we're placing the right foot and noticing a nice negative shape between the right and left foot. You can see the... Uh, green forest behind them. So make sure to leave some room there between the two legs. Now just looking a little bit, double checking here. Hope you guys are keeping up. So now we're gonna go up to the head. And so I'm giving you a close up of the head as promised. So now we're going to work on that bill, that nice long bill. I'm drawing the line that um, indicates the separation of the top and the bottom bill parts, the mandible and maxilla. And the base of the bill has kind of a little V shape where the tiny little feathers come up onto the bill. And the top of the bill and also another little arch there where we're going to later on draw the red uh, nasal tufts. We really want to get that sh bill shape correct. That's super important. And it's a little bit hard at this angle for me because my paper is taped down. But if you want to shift your paper to make it easier for you to make those lines. So you really want to focus on that shape of the bill. And when I go on to add colored pencil, uh, I'll get that a little bit closer, I think. Uh, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm measuring the bill there. So make sure you measure the length of the bill and compare it to the head. So it's about as wide as to the back of those uh, cream colored auricular feathers. Remember, as always, you're really looking back and forth, always checking your bird on the tree and comparing it to your sketch. Now we're going to make the back of his head a lot bigger. I noticed I made it a little bit too small, but no big deal. That's why we start so light and loose. Now 
So you see, I haven't done much erasing yet. Double checking the length of his head there and the width of the head. Okay, now we're gonna place the eye. So kind of thinking about how far back the eye is from the bill, there's some white uh, area in front of the eye. So just noticing how big the eye is compared to the width of the bill and how far down the eye is from the forehead and back from the end of the bill. And then I'm just very lightly uh, adding in where the black color patterns are. Again, this is the uh, female, so she's got some more black on her um, the top of her head uh, than the male does. The male has more red. And that's how most woodpeckers are. A little bit difference between the male and the female so they can recognize each other. Pretty soon we're gonna move on to the rest of the body. So just be double checking. I could probably fix my lower bill a bit, but I'll do that later when I add colored pencil. So things don't have to be perfect at this point because you're gonna modify things as you add colored pencil. Again, we really wanna make sure that bill is, is correct. Every species of bird has a different kind of bill. And even among the woodpeckers, they have different uh, bills that are different relative lengths. Like here in North America, we've got the downy woodpecker, which has a really short bill compared to its, uh, its uh, close relative, the hairy woodpecker that it looks a lot like. There I go. So now I'm really fixing that lower part of the bill. It is wider than I'd had it before. So don't be afraid to go back and fix things. And always kind of thinking as a scientist and observing and noticing things like those field marks, like those orange nasal tufts. Okay, we're gonna move on now. We're gonna move on to the body. So let's get that chest. Nice, nice big rounded chest. And now the upper leg that's feathered. So little short little marks to indicate that that's feathered at the top of the leg. And there's a little curve there where the uh, ankle is technically. <laughs> the ankle is way up on the leg. And now you can see the whole leg better and the whole bird as we go down towards the belly and the vent. And that red part down there, the undertail coverts which is a triangular area that uh, kind of covers the base of the underside of the tail. And then we have the upper tail coverts, a bunch of uh, light loose feathers that cover the top of the tail. Then we're gonna firm up the uh, left set of feathers. Again, there's six there, but we can't see all of them. We mainly seen the central pair that are the ones that are barred black and white. The rest of the tail feathers are pure black. Again, to be strong with that melanin pigment. Now let's move on to the wing. So there's a close up of the wing. We're just gonna get the outline first. So that's a big triangle, but it's not a perfect line down the back. Those secondaries are a little bit wider. And then now we've got the narrower primaries. I could probably draw them a little bit longer. Maybe I do that later in the colored pencil part. Anyway, we're making this basic triangular shape. Although those black primary feathers are a little bit wider 
And like I told you, something unique is that one prim black primary feather is shorter than all the other ones in the woodpeckers. So I indicated that a bit. Now I'm gonna move on to the leg. So here's your close up of the leg. Gonna get the right leg, which is, um, we only see the tarsus, the toes are hidden behind the trunk. So I'm kind of firming up the trunk here so you can see that. So we can tuck that right leg behind. And then the left leg, uh, we see uh, the toes. So we're gonna draw the, the tarsus and it doesn't have to be exactly straight. I think I've got a little bit too straight, but again, when I add the colored pencil, I'll probably modify that a bit, but it's uh, um, bent a little bit because there are some various bones in there. So it's um, bent where the three toes connect. Well, there's actually four toes, but we only see three really well. So firming up the rest of that trunk before we move on to the toes. Again, zygodactyl orientation. So I've got a little bit of a, uh, the artwork outline for you to see the toes a little bit better. They're pretty small in, in this sketch, so we're not gonna add a lot of detail, but there are a lot of kind of bumps <laughs> on the toes to help them to uh, give a grip on the branch. And the very end of each toe is a little bit widened right before you see the claw. So that's the two main, very strong, long toes we see. And each of those is a very long claw. You could probably draw yours a little longer than I did. So those claws really have to hold on, especially with the woodpeckers who are always hanging on for dear life to a vertical trunk as opposed to a little uh, warbler or something. Now here I'm adding that toe and just a little bit of a shadow of that um, toe number two that's pretty much hidden behind toe number three. Um, and then toe number one, which you'd think of as kind of the thumb, it's flattened against the tree trunk. You can see the actual toenail is sort of flattened and pressed against the tree trunk, holding on. Okay. So now I've given you another image. It's not exactly the same toe arrangement, but I just wanted to show you close up so you can see a little bit better how the toe does have these sort of parallel lines, which are these little uh, scales that are on the toes. So I'm drawing some of those parallel lines. We're not being exact. This is not a scientific illustration, but I just want you to know that the toes do have some, not only some joints in each toe, but also a bunch of tiny little scales. And they go up the tarsus too, or the upper part of the leg. Okie dokie, now getting towards the part that's kind of intimidating, the, the um, the wing, but if we first break it down into its major parts, that'll make it a little bit easier for you to kind of understand the patterns on the wing. And um, so we're gonna draw that outline of sort of the mantle part and then the scapulars, and then where the coverts are. And again, because of this black and white pied coloration, um, of the wings, it really makes it difficult to see all of these different sections. But just thinking about adding those sections will help you to see it a little bit better now that you see the, the real photograph. And then the outline of the secondaries, which are right next to the black primaries. And then we're gonna add a little bit more detail to the upper tail coverts. You see there's some banding on those as well as some V shapes or what they call chevrons on the upper tail coverts. And we've got some of those on the under tail coverts as well. And then some white bands on the central tail feathers. So there's a very strong black part that I'm drawing right there that's the central rachis. 
and then the white bands. And again, those are only on the two central tail feathers. The rest of the tail feathers are pure black. That melanin pigment giving them that black pigment, which is a very strong pigment because woodpeckers do have to go in and out of their cavity. Woodpeckers use that big, strong uh, bill, not only to forage and feed and call or drum to uh, communicate with their uh, friends and foes and girlfriends and boyfriends, but they use that big bill to excavate a huge nest. And then they are gonna go in and out of that nest multiple times visiting the nestlings. So that tail's gotta be really strong because it's gonna get all bent up <laughs> and kind of frazzled while it's going in and out of the nest cavity. Now the belly there and the vent area uh, has all these slightly little kind of fluffy dark patterns. So they're kind of disorganized because those, those feathers of the belly and the vent are longer um, and less less, they're kind of more downy. Although an interesting fact about woodpeckers is woodpeckers do not have any down feathers. Interesting tidbit. So anyway, we're adding a few more of those chevron or V shapes to the uh, undertail coverts there. Okay. Now going back to the head, we're just going to start firming up the edges now, kind of finishing up. And then uh, I will show you a very quick version of how you might color it in. But let's just firm up our uh, field marks here. We've got the eye with the black pupil we'll add later. We've got the black supercilious region that the female has. and the red area, those auricular feathers uh, covering the ear are kind of a circular shape and they go back onto the red part and then the red part comes down and some of the breast, the cream colored breast feathers uh, overlap the shoulder right there. So now um, it's hard for you to see this on the real bird, but I want you just to follow along and draw some of these kind of half moon shapes. They almost look like uh, shingles on a, a house as well. And that'll just help you to kind of organize where those feathers are. And then later on, we'll put some black and white on them. And you can always refer back in the replay to some of the other photographs of the bird, especially the bird that was flying out of its nest. And you can see very well how these um, um, coverts, especially, and these tertials right here that we're drawing. And then the rest of the set of secondaries is banded. There's three tertials and then um, um, nine no, I think six more. Yeah, six more of the secondaries. And then this very short primary. And then nine more longer uh, primaries that each are um, a little bit longer than the one before. So we're going to just emphasize those a bit. So you see there's a pretty obvious separation between the black primaries and the banded secondaries. Now I'm going to show you very quickly since I knew we were going to run over and we're really trying not to go too much farther. Um, I'm just going to show you a five minute version here of how I would add color. So I'm doing colored pencils. And what I like to do is put a lot of layers on. So like with the black bill, I don't just use black. I use a little bit of black and gray and blue, just like I am here with the um, black head. We're layering black and gray and blue, adding some brown to the iris. And the back of the head, we're using some yellow and red and brown. 
So that's how you get colored pencils to look really realistic is you try to layer them very gently over themselves. Uh, and that gives you a lot more realistic color patterns. The chest and belly, I'm giving brown and yellow and kind of an ochre color. And some of that brown on the, the vent. And gray and blue and black on the legs. And then with the tail feathers, also layering gray and blue and black and trying to shade those feathers in the direction that the vein is, the individual feathers. Then those chevron patterns on the uh, tail and the upper tail and undertail coverts. Now, remember when you're done with your sketch, we'd love to have you share it on any social media. Use the hashtag CEBF2021. Oh, you're welcome, Hannah. Glad you enjoyed this. So again, that pied uh, wing can take you forever, <laughs> but I am just darkening up within each of those uh, feather segments we outlined before, some banding patterns in both grays and blues and blacks to make them be a little bit more lively than just putting on the black right away. So we're gonna finish up here. And we're gonna invite, we're gonna invite Scott and Lisa back on here. So I just click the invite button to invite Scott and Lisa back. While I'm just firming up the rest of the tail. So here we go. I'm just adding a little bit of fun uh, to the tree. Of course, you could spend a lot more time on that tree. I don't know what species that is. It doesn't really look like a palm tree, but they often are on palm trees. And then I'm doing some shading um, under the toes and under the bird because the sun is probably coming from the upper right and it's going to cast a little bit of a shadow onto the trunk. And so that's what I added there. Okay, so tell me in the chat box if you've been having fun, if you were following along. Does anybody have any questions about uh, endemic birds of the Caribbean, the Caribbean Endemic Bird Festival, uh, woodpeckers, uh, endemic woodpeckers of the Caribbean? Just type your uh, questions into the chat box. Yes, the males and the females look different. And if you watch the replay, you could catch that a little bit. Scott was talking about that and so was I. So in this case, um, this is a female uh, West Indian woodpecker. And um, we can tell it's a female because she's got this black band um, above her eye here. And the male has more red right there and no black. All right. Oh, Bernadette said that was so much fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. okay. And, oh, yes. People were asking if they could share their sketches. Uh, that is something we usually do too. Let me see. Let's see. Since we're waiting for some questions. Yeah. Yeah, Lisa said. Okay, so I'm inviting uh, Jamie up and see if she wants to... Now, Scott, I'm going to cut out of you because there's a lot of background noise. Hello, let's get some kids up. How are you guys? Good. Wonderful. Oh, fabulous woodpecker. I love that. Have you drawn woodpeckers with me before? 
I don't think so. Oh, okay, great. Well, thanks for uh, joining today. So we've got both of you guys doing. Do you want I'm to start? I'm starting. I'm starting. <laughs> oh, wow. And you got started with the uh, black and white pied part. Yeah. Well, it's really challenging and it'll take you a while to add all those black and white stripes. So make sure to share those later if you'd like to on Facebook. <laughs> Today is my mom's birthday and she turned 41. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Happy birthday, Jamie. Well, Sarah and Leah, all you guys, um, anybody else joining us here today? Any of the other kids? No? Um, no. Do you have any questions for us about woodpeckers in general? No. No? Okay. I guess we taught you everything about them. Well, I hope you can join us again next time we have a, a workshop here. Okay. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye. Great. Okay. And Hannah wants to share. Great. I haven't seen Hannah in so long. Yeah. Nikki says happy birthday. All everybody's saying happy birthday to Jamie. Who's, who's the mom of those two wonderful gals we just saw. Okay. Anybody else? Any other questions? Eileen says, how do they stay warm if they don't have down feathers? Well, especially the juveniles. Well, that's a great question, Eileen, because they nest in cavities and the cavity of the tree is quite warm. That's why uh, biologists think that they may lack down feathers. Again, down, um, woodpeckers are kind of unique in not having any down feathers. Okay. Anybody else? Elizabeth wants to share. So I'm just going to click on a few people uh, to see who comes up next. And otherwise, I think we're pretty much finished with our main content. So uh, if you've got to get going, you can. Uh, but if you want to stick around and ask any more questions or share, I'll hang out and share as long as you want to. Uh, Samuel and mom want to share, so I'll click them. So we'll just see who gets up here first. Sometimes it takes just a moment or two for the, um, for them to go live. Yeah. Yeah. So I invited, uh, Hannah and Elizabeth and Samuel. Great. Any other questions? I'm looking in the chat box if there's any other questions. Oh, good. Okay. Elizabeth is up next. Hello. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Let's have Elizabeth here first. It's okay. Oh, nice. Fabulous. Great. Oh, we lost Elizabeth. Let's go on to Samuel. Hey. Hi, Samuel. Hey. I just sketched it and my mom and I co colored it. You guys are fast. Wow, that's fabulous. <laughs> now, any questions for uh, the biologist about woodpeckers? Oh, so um, what color are the eggs? Oh, boy, that's a great question. I don't know. That's a wonderful question. Um, I can look that up later on and uh, get back to you guys. Uh, there is a wonderful resource that um, I can share right now. Um, it's in the chat box. It's called Birds of the World. It's a Cornell Lab of Ornithology website. Uh, you do need to be a member, but there are some things on there that you can get for free. But um, I think that's a great question. Okay. Any other yeah. questions? Um, I don't think so. I think we're good. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Bye. -bye. Hey, you too. Bye. Eggs are white and unmarked. Oh, that's great. Thanks for asking that question. I had a feeling they might be white because since they're hidden inside the nest cavity, it's not like they're in an open um, nest like maybe a, a robin or a warbler would have and would have to be maybe camouflaged. So it makes sense that the eggs are just white. Okay. Debbie says, do woodpeckers usually stay in the same neighborhood or do they travel far distances? So that totally depends on the species. Here where I live in um, Oregon, 
Uh, one of my favorite migratory woodpeckers is the Lewis's woodpecker, and it comes up from California to Oregon to nest, and it has actually just arrived here. So there are some migratory woodpeckers, um, but often woodpeckers that are in more tropical regions like the Caribbean are what we call sedentary. <laughs> doesn't mean they're uh, lazy. It just means they don't migrate. Um, and there are um, other uh, birds that maybe migrate just up or down in elevation uh, to kind of follow the um, good weather or the insects or something like that. So, uh, so yeah, it really depends, but um, that's a great question. So some, just like some birds um, are sedentary and don't migrate and others migrate thousands and thousands of miles, even like tiny, tiny uh, hummingbirds might migrate from the tropics to North America for the breeding season. <laughs> so if you use that hashtag on Instagram or or Facebook or, or anywhere, um, Twitter, then we can go uh, look at those drawings. So I really encourage you to do that. I would love to see your sketches, whether you just finish them up in graphite pencil or whether you do a more um, final drawing uh, like this one here uh, that could take you quite a long time. So that would be fun to, to really see you put some more time and energy into those field marks and into some, um, uh, patterns and textures on that tree. Because again, woodpeckers are very closely associated with trees since they not only um, drum on a tree to communicate, uh, they will um, uh, glean insects from under the bark of the tree. They will excavate their nest in the trees. And so the tree is a very important part of their life. Okay, so I think we're, we're done now. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today for the um, uh, Caribbean Endemic Bird Festival's uh, sketching workshop and uh, education workshop on the West Indian woodpecker. And be sure to um, follow Birds Caribbean um, on their website and on their Facebook page. You'll learn a ton more this whole month. Uh, the Caribbean Endemic Bird Festival is a month long uh, celebration of all 171 species of birds that are endemic to the Caribbean, as well as 12 woodpeckers. Okay, thank you. I'm glad you guys like this. And thank you so much, uh, Lisa of Birds Caribbean and Scott of the Bahamas National Trust for um, doing this webinar with me. Okay, take care and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.